Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. And if you like the content, please share it. And if you hit the notification bell, as I release content, you'll be notified and be the first to see it and maybe comment. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so somebody asked me to do this review of Nikki Ryan and J-Rod's wrestling. Um, this is an in-house thing. This isn't like for any money as far as I know, uh, more bragging rights. And uh, so they both got their shoes on. They talked Nikki into wearing shoes. Uh, they couldn't talk him into wearing a singlet, though. And so I'm just going to talk about what I see and what I think is good uh, position and, and proper strategy and technique and potentially some things that maybe you, know, you could work on, show you maybe some flaws that they have in their wrestling. And this, this is a live thing, right? So this is not them practicing technique. So things, things are happening right at full speed. And so um, it's important that you actually record and watch your own matches so that you can see what, what you're doing wrong. Cause all of us do stuff wrong. Now, nobody's technique is perfect, but under pressure and under speed and when you're tired in particular uh, technique starts to fall apart. So uh, the only way to get around that is to drill a lot and then wrestle hard a lot. So let's just go through it and we'll see what I, uh, I'll talk you through what I see. So this check here, that comes from international wrestling. Back in my day, you used to have singlets that went all the way down <clears throat> below the hips even. And then even the legs would come all the way up to like um, real high. And, and it's, it helped you because you were slippery. And so it actually, it literally helped you um, if you were in the middle of the match and you're sweating. You're allowed to be sweaty when you were there. They didn't want you coming out all slippery, okay? Um, <clears throat> so... You can see that, you know, they've been working out, got a good sweat going and stuff. So Nikki's adopted a better wrestling stance here. So I see him collar tying with, uh, well, he reached there. Let me go back here for a second. Let's see if I can go back here. Yeah, see that? This is bad news, my friends. Never do this here. He can just post at that. Can't do anything to stop it because he's going to pull his own weight down and his leg will be stuck there. Um, I saw him collar tying the appropriate way, which was at the opposite arm. Um, but you don't want to be reaching like this, okay? You want to walk forward, make almost like elbow contact with people. You don't want to be reaching out like this because it's easy for me to post here and take your leg away from you, okay? Okay, so that was appropriate. See here, this is a good stance that Nikki has. Okay, he's he's reaching with his opposite. Um, so he's reaching with his arm that's opposite of his front leg. Now, this is good because you can and your arm, your forearm should be a little lower, almost almost resting on your knee, because then when he shoots, you can get your arm in between him and get an underhook. And so here, what I already saw J Rod do was post, but he should be posting behind the elbow, because when you post behind the elbow, it gives you a tremendous amount of time to be able to get in on the legs. When you post here, you're just relying on your athleticism because they're going to be able to get everything back. You try it, post behind the elbow and, and drive in and you'll see that it, it takes, cause it's connected, you know, to their, their humerus is connected like up in here. So when you do it and you lift the, and you drive forward, their, their body weight goes back. It shifts their, their weight back and they can't do anything to stop it. Okay. So that wasn't such a bad <clears throat> shot there. He didn't have a whole lot of setup there, but let's just walk that through real quick. And then I know, watch this once through. So, so, okay. So he's just trying to take this collar tie off. Okay. And generally speaking, he's got really good position here. And as he's shooting, see how the hands never really got out of the way. And you see how Nikki dropped his hand down. So that's actually, well, he kind of pushed it down, but Nikki's doing a good job of keeping it down. And you see how his hands are going to hit him. Boom. See how his hands hit him first. Right, he got past his head, but you see how the hands make contact. The problem is, is that he was too flat-footed to begin with, and you need to be on the balls of your feet. So he's kind of stuck there. Okay, so then now he'll have to now look at that elbow makes contact, right? And now he's getting his legs back, nice. And then look now, reaching in, and getting that underhook. Now, if he had just dropped that arm to begin with, like something I taught on video number twenty-five, I think I also taught on video number one stuff too is to drop this drop this hand down low and catch him on the chest with the inside of your forearm okay because then now 
he has to do more arm movement to get it back. But he, he's in good. He's in pretty good shape here. I mean, J Rod came in and he did a straight on shot, which I would advise against. And if you do do that, then you might have to choose a side. You know, a single leg side. In this case, he doesn't want a single leg to this side because he's got the underhook. He'd want a single leg to the far side. Okay, so let's just play this through and see what happens here. And then Nikki ends up with the underhook. Heads on the wrong side of it though. Runs him out of bounds. See, that was a nice sequence there, but the problem with it is he showed his hand. You know, you, you need to know where your out-of-bounds are. <clears throat> you never want to do that. If you're uh, in competition, then this matters, right? Because they're just, I mean, I know that they're just here with each other, but, you know, this here, having your head on the wrong side of the underhook, it doesn't really help you. You need to do something with it right away. Had his head been on the right side of the underhook here, he would have been able to easily circle his butt back to facing inbounds and do that exact same move. But when you do this and you pull your head this far away from the underhook, I know you feel like you're strong, but you're not. It's just your arm. You know, your arm's the only thing doing anything on that side because now your head's so far away. And, you know, you don't really have an underhook anymore. I mean, you just have like the lat. You, you don't really have any pressure. And unless you're doing a really good job controlling his far arm down, which is like the Iranian underhook, which none of you know how to do that. Okay. So don't respond on my comment page and say like, well, the Iranian underhook is when your head's out of position. Well, you know what? None of you know how to do that. And it's it's used specifically for like international wrestling where you push people to the out of bounds, force them either out of bounds or when they push back because they have to, or else they're going to get you know scored on with a push out. There are no push outs in college. Then they have to push back and they leads them to all kinds of problems like for opening themselves up none of you do that so stop telling me that that's why you have your head on the wrong side of the underhook like in in that move the iranian underhook you need to have basically a very strong like overhookish kind of um on that this arm and very much controlling that arm or it, will, or it won't work um and none of those guys are doing that so i mean this is kind of nice what he does here where he let's go half speed here where he runs him out and knee taps and that's nice you know right to a double it's beautiful it's like an inside you know like a baza guard really but he did it in the at the wrong time wrong place now one more time here it's just wrong time wrong place man you just don't want to you just don't want to give somebody your hand and i know he knows adcc but guess what this is an adcc so it doesn't count for you for anything all it does is now say oh better be careful and that was nice there let's go back and look at that real quick all right, let's look at this at half speed. So you see how he's got that overtie there. Nikki pulls this off. And then as he pulls that off, he goes to drag here. The problem is, and you know, this was a great level change because that's what the boot scoot allows you to do. So he's going to sit through here. We call that the boot scoot in wrestling. But usually if you do the boot scoot, you want to get closer. Um, it does give you a good level change in keeping your back straight. But the problem with it is, um, there was no penetration forward. So I think that this would have worked a little bit better because it's it, the setup for it was great. How he pushed that hand off. He pushed that hand down and went straight to it. That was actually really nice. Um, and if he had penetrated forward, he would have been able to get deeper in there and potentially up in the crotch, but watch how athletic J rod is. I mean, he never even gets that leg it's out. So he looks like he's a real tough guy to wrestle against because he's very athletic. J-Rod, that is. And then he comes right at him. See, that's classic wrestling there. That is classic wrestling right there to attack right off that shot. And then Nikki gets a nice underhook again, but unfortunately, you know, he didn't wasn't aware of where the out of bounds was. That doesn't give you anything to run people out like that, by the way. So let's watch this again, but we'll watch it in slow-mo. So I see how like he gives him no time. And as soon as he gets back up here and he reaches, he just dives for it. I mean, I don't particularly like how J-Rod is shooting with no setups. I, I would expect him to have, you know, better job posting and stuff. But I think, you know, he's just trying to push the action. He's trying to be the most offensive guy that he can be to keep him from taking any shots. And he is standing flat-footed. He is standing up with his heel way too much on the ground. But, man, I mean, if you're going to shoot from far away like that, you need to get these elbows out of the way. Because you see how this hand's coming back down? See how Nicky Ryan's hand's going to come back down? That's, his, that's what's going to establish this underhook. Boom. 
right? God, I mean, it's a great penetration. I mean, the kid's got great mechanics. Like, look at how beautiful these mechanics are. Um, you know, it's a little big. And for my taste, this uh, big step is it's a little too much. But he certainly has great, powerful mechanics and a long reach. Um, but he's straight on shooting. And, you know, make no mistake about it. This kid, Nikki, has some heavy, heavy hips, dude. Um, he, he's, and I don't mean by his weight, I mean by his technique. He's got very good hips. It's very powerful. And this is all good, what he's doing here. But the problem is, is that, look, he's, again, he's going to establish this underhook and look how far away he is. He is so far, he's so close to the back right now that this arm, if, if I ended up in this position, I would, I would immediately switch to the drag here, arm drag and take the back because he's already got his head down and then see how, how far his head's down. But he really believes in this underhook and I think it's fine. He just needs to learn how to get his head on the same side of it because it isn't helping him. You know, I mean, this is all power here. Um, and when he learns how to use less power, so here, right, he should be looking at where this out of bounds is and go, uh Oh, like I'm really close to getting the Greco body lock. Like I've showed on my channel, right? Greco body lock. And where you step to the inside and circle and put him onto his back and bounce, right? Because you got to know where the out of bounds are. Your eyeball should be going, uh oh, this is this is not good. I need to either drop down to the single, or if he's this far over, I would just say, you know, go to the Greco body lock, stick your you know your knee in the middle, just like I show in video number six, and circle and circle and put him back to the mat. That is a huge part of wrestling, my friends. Huge part of wrestling is knowing where you are on the mat. You have to know where you are. Right, and so then they go out of bounds, and then again, that doesn't help them with anything. Let's just watch the sequence one more time. I liked it, right? And then J-Rod just pushes the action, comes right at him. Nikki gets an underhook, runs him out of bounds. And I know that these things happen quickly, okay? But you definitely need to know where your out of bounds are. It's no use to use all that energy, okay? And there's another shot um, from space. Let, let me play it through, and then we'll go back. See how he stops? Now he takes the back. That's mad awareness. Oh boy, that's locking hands. <laughs> okay, a lot went on here. Let's let's rewind that and see. All right, let's watch this. Okay, shot from space. He pauses because he saw the out of bounds. Nikki tries a very low level Gramby, very poor Gramby, and then they end up in this position. Okay, so now let's look at it in slow motion. I just wanted to look at it one more time, and we'll look at it in slow motion. Okay, see this shot, no posting, straight on shot. He pauses, see where he saw that? Those, that's the mat awareness, okay? Now, watch when he shoots how much hip he runs into because he's not getting his arms out of the way, okay? Now, this is this is going to be very tiring on Nikki, even though you're like, man, he's taking all the shots. But it's tiring on Nikki because he's behind, okay, because he's not initiating the shots. He hasn't really taken any yet. Everything's sort of been defensive, um, so he reaches that arm is all the way behind him. That's something he does a lot. He needs to learn how to keep his hands out in front. Okay. Like I show in my sta uh, video on stance and he does this where he walks a lot and his arms sort of move around. And I know that you would think that you're just relaxed and you're using less energy, but trust me, when you have to move your arms very quickly, it's a lot more energy. So he ought to be posting that if he had posted that he would have been in so deep, Nikki would have been, wouldn't have been able to do anything. But again, he drops that arm. He's very good at getting that underhook. But this time, he gets in far enough. And you see how Nikki puts rubber on the mat? That's not going to help him. Okay. And, and it's that's definitely, see, he just stopped it. And then now he's going to allow him to get in because he put too much rubber on the mat. Okay. And it's going to cost him a lot of energy. But boy, I mean, look at the driving force of this kid. He's J Rod's tough. So he sees the out of bounds. And he stops and does the appropriate thing. Watch his hips get up underneath him, right? And he lifts. And I want to, uh, maybe he, maybe this was the appropriate move to come. I wouldn't have wanted to come up to the waist. I would have, if, if, if he was my wrestler, I would have told him, you know, I would have reprimanded him for it a little bit and been like, all he had to do was keep his toes in bounds here and drive and get the takedown out of bounds, which is not a bad thing. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This kind of happens, the heat of the moment, right? So he gets behind, okay? And before he even actually gets a chance to do a good lift, he looks like, see how he's going right to it, like he's going to lift? Now Nikki starts the Gramby, which he should have started the Gramby off the lift, 
Okay. And the reason I said this is a low level Granby is because look how he's not rolling across his shoulder blades and his legs should be going in a circle. Okay. If he is going to do a shoulder roll off the Granby, that is different than the traditional Granby where your legs face, you know, kind of thing. So I'll hand him that, but watch his Look how see how his legs are completely wide open and like and like all like long. You want your knees like you know, you want your legs tight. And then here he tries to do a high leg over, but he's got locking hands, and the ref ought to have called that. Now I I don't know what the score would have been. It depends. Like, you know, sometimes they'll still give you the takedown and then he, Nikki gets a free, you know, point out of this. But not calling it after that, that was kind of a bad call. Um, but wasn't a very it wasn't a very high level Granby, to be honest. I mean, it was sort of bad. And if he had done it the appropriate way, where he had rolled across both shoulders, I, I don't show it from the standing position in my Granby video, but I do show the shoulder roll. And when you do the shoulder roll, your legs can't be like this, dude. Like they just they just it it took all the power. See, the problem is is that see his hip should be coming in and taking this shoulder to the mat. If his legs were going that way, okay, this way, not over top of his back, that was a mistake there. That's why it didn't work. Okay, but he should have gotten a locking hands call. So Nikki should be winning, or it should be two to one in my opinion. And then obviously we're missing footage because we didn't see the legs come in. He's doing the appropriate thing by just riding a power half, you know, looking probably for the time to run out, whatever. Looks like the blew the whistle they're going to. Looks like he was going to a splatal. Time's up. Okay, so let's go to normal. And then I think here, um, so he defers that little motion that you saw, his, that X that he did with his hands. That means it, he's giving his choice to Nikki. So then Nikki has to choose top, bottom, or neutral. He chooses down. Okay, and they stand up and without hand control at all. And a... <laughs> um, well, let me let me play the rest of it out, and then he faces him. Okay, so that happened pretty quick, but let me show you why that that Gramby is is don't ever do it like that if you're wrestling. Okay, it works for jujitsu because you can get into guard, but or a triangle off that, but that's definitely a very low level Gramby for for wrestling, and I'll show you why in here in a second. Okay, so he stands up, no hand control. I'm actually surprised J Rod didn't just work harder to break him down, um, and he's not trying to mat return him. Don't ever do the Gramby without – and see how he lets go? Because I think he just expected if he had done the Gramby the proper way, he would have – his legs would have <clears throat> ended up – You know, he would have gone, continued over, and then he would have let go and then just follow him around. And I think that's what he tried to do. But, like, look at how – see, like, this is why you don't keep your legs open. See how, like, his foot got caught here? Man, if J-Rod had seen that coming a little bit better, that would have been the end of the match. He could have put him on his back and it would have been done. Um, if he didn't pin him, he would have definitely gotten a ton of back points and he would have been able to do nothing for the rest of the match. But you see how flat on his back he is here? That is not a wrestling Gramby at all. The Grambys that they do in jujitsu have a different purpose. You know, you're facing the guy and you want to get to guard. And that's kind of what he's doing here. But he just rolls all the way across his back here. And... I mean, like it worked. He got an escape out of it, but it was pretty horrible. And to be honest with you, like he should have gotten caught with that. And the the mistake that J-Rod makes here is, is that instead of going behind the arm here, which is what he should have done, this arm should have been chasing the hips, not the shoulder line. And this is a habit that I see a lot of people do. They chase the shoulders. Forget the shoulders. If you grab the shoulders, his legs can still move. But if you chase the hip line, so if his arm would have come behind that elbow there, right? And I teach all of my guys to chase the hip line. Chase his hips. That's what he's moving with. He's not moving with his shoulders. He's moving with his hips. If you chase the hip line, then this elbow, see how he's going to pull. Nikki's going to pull his elbow close to his side, which is the appropriate thing to do, and then get it up in between him up on his hip and save himself from getting Nick, uh, from J-Rod getting back on his back. See there? And then now he's out and he gets an escape point. So it could have been with the with the locking hands, it should be two to two right now. Okay, uh, let's play it through. Okay, so let's go back and look at that real quick. Now, here's something that I want you to see, okay? Watch Nikki's feet. Watch this. See how he takes this back step here? That's no bueno, because watch as soon as he starts doing it, J-Rod already starts reacting. 
See how he's going to stop moving forward now? Stops moving forward. He hasn't even gotten anywhere near the shot yet, but he already is going to start moving his his hands out in front and starting to get his legs back. Okay, and then so he does this stutter step thing where it's it's telegraphing the shot. Okay, where he this for, that's the leg that goes back first. So you don't need to do that. You know what I mean? Like that that leg, he should have gotten that leg already in position, like like leading it, you know, and maybe done a little hand fighting here and then taking the shot. But this here is all telegraphing. And he doesn't post behind the elbows. He posts at the at the forearms, which isn't going to help him at all. And so because what ends up happening is and Nikki's actually doing a great job of this, is that uh, when J-Rod's shooting, Nikki's getting his chest in the way and Nikki sort of gets underneath his chest here, which is good. Um, but J-Rod sprawls and there's something else I saw. Yeah, that's what I want to show you. So these are things that I all see. Okay. I've been watching film for like 30 years now because I watched my own and I learned how to study my own back in the day. And then Brian Reardon, my head coach, he was a real big guy. I'm watching film and he taught me a ton. And you see how, <clears throat> see how watch his foot. So this is unlike what Nikki was doing. You see how he goes shoelaces down here when his foot hits the mat it won't transfer that weight, that energy into him and help him. It's going to transfer the energy away from him, and then he's going to get extended. And you see how it worked, even though he didn't keep his knee stiff like this, just him doing that didn't put the friction on the mat. His foot's uh, out of the way, so you can't see. But see how it goes back a little bit more, and, it's, and that's going to extend him. And now he's so extended, he has no chance of ever getting in, okay? Okay, and so that was the end of that exchange there. Oh, and then we're already starting to see. So this happens. I think Nikki was already starting to show some signs of fatigue if and or frustration. And I'm starting to see his stance breakdown, whereas I'm not seeing a whole lot of stance breakdown from J-Rod. See, because when they came out of that position, J-Rod did not stand straight up. Nikki stood straight up. And in fact, that probably could have been a really good um, – opportunity for j-rod here to to get a shot off so like let's look here uh, in slow-mo we'll do it real slow okay so see how he never comes out of his stance and then now watch nikki's now standing straight up leaning all the way over here arms are way out of position and everything and leg is you know got a lot of weight on it and i'm already starting to see his stance break down and see how his stance is still very good Okay, now this takes a lot of training. Still posting at the wrist, though, which kind of drives me nuts. I can't believe he's doing that. And then look at that chest contact. This is why you don't take straight on sh uh, shots. This kid's neck is going to get wrecked if he keeps doing that. Okay, he is, as good as his mechanics are for a lot of things, I really think he needs to work. And you see how he didn't do, like, see how his foot was already here? And he does a little bit of a back step here, but it's it's mortal. It, it's not as bad. Well, both of them aren't very good. He just looks uh, like he's in a better position. But you can tell, though, that by taking that back step, okay, I'll give him the same criticism, that Nikki already starts reacting. And you don't want that. You don't want this guy already reacting. So he's a little slow to react, though, a little slower than him. But he's good at getting his arm down. See how he's shut? He's very he, – that's something that he's definitely gotten better at. See how now he's going to run into this? And now he's got to run into all this meat and – I mean, he really meets that meat, man. Like Nikki, and Nikki looks like he's a strong guy. He doesn't look like anybody that you want to just, you know, shoot on straight on like that. But what it's doing is it's pushing the action. Head still on the wrong side of the underhook. If he pumbles his head up underneath his, like I showed in my Russian video, where you can roll it up underneath, then you can get back on the same side. And then you own all this. You own everything. When your head, your underhook, right? Your head's on the same side of it. And then you can, and it depends on what you're trying to run, but a lot, I prefer the leg, like the Greco thing with your leg closer to the middle because it prevents any underhook headlocks that he has um, from, for, from his overhook. It prevents that um, when you block the inside thigh contact. Okay. And it gives you all sorts of options of body locks, everything I showed on video number six, but anyway, so he's got his head on the wrong side of the underhook again and see he's using a ton of muscle and you can tell he's using a lot of muscle because of the posture that I see post break up, right? So like, this is all muscle. And you see he's having to lift and use a lot of muscle because his head is way, way out of position. He's got double underhooks here, so that's good. But he initially had the underhook on that side, so his head should have been there. All right, let's watch that exchange one more time because there's two shots. So he takes a shot, right? A lot of energy expended. Nothing happens. Good sprawl, right? He posts. 
And he ends up in this underhook position, um, heads on the wrong side of it, right? And then just a lot of muscle. I think he blew the whistle. It may have been the end of the period. Okay, that's what it was. They weren't out of bounds because I was going to say that's pretty terrible if that had been the call. Okay, so now, um, okay, J-Rod stands up without hand control first, which is not what I would recommend. And then those sort of little trip things, they don't work. Okay, let's break this down for a second. A lot happened there. Okay, so he starts, see how high his hips are? Um, you want, and I've shown this on several of my videos, you want your hips to be up and under his so you can drive him forward and put the weight on his hands. When somebody has a ton of weight on their hands, right, they can't stand up. But if your hips are open oh, over top like this, they can eat without legs in, they can easily stand up, okay, without really any effort. And in fact, I mean, he just kind of, now this is, uh, okay, he didn't even do that. Yeah, he just did a, he just stood up, man, like without hand control or anything else. Um, but what he does is that he turns, which is nice. See how his hips now are out, are at a 90 degree angle from his. So now he can get, now it's sort of harder to mat return him. Okay, so now he's got hand control. And this sort of stuff, don't, don't do it. it. It actually, the, the more that you have to see how he now is, have to hop and stutter step and all that kind of stuff, it's just going to wear yourself out. Didn't work anyway. <clears throat> see how he's got his hips back here. He's going to take this hand and what we call put it in the back pocket, right? And then right away takes a shot. And again, what he's doing by doing that, uh, but in, in effect, is keeping, and now Nikki's stance is really breaking down, and his is not, J-Rod's is not breaking down. See how his arms are sort of flailing and stuff? When I see this, and I get a chance to tell my kids when they're out there, I'm like, dude, like heavy on the head, heavy on the head, heavy on the head. And the reason is because he's already tired. So now you can start going to more short offense, pull him to the mat, spin behind, because he's, he's starting to get real out of position, man. And that's fatigue. And J-Rod is like a, a shark that smells blood in the water, man. I mean, he just keeps coming after you. So that actually is not bad short offense there uh, from Nikki. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with if you don't get it the first time, you know, grab the chin and circle and pull them back down. Grab the chin, circle, pull them back down. You know, really establish that front headlock and use it because there was a lot of opportunities here, you know, for him to score off of a shot that he's not setting up, you know. And I, I would imagine that Nikki can can do those things, you know. I mean, like he – he just needs to practice more on, you know, basic, the basics of takedowns. So this kind of see this kind of thing here. He does this a lot. I see him do it a lot. He's pulling himself so far to position and all these torso muscles and everything, they get very tired and you get in a lot of problems like on the heel, all this sort of stuff. J rod's doing all the pushing and you might think he's using more energy, but he's not because he's in a good stance. Okay. So Nikki's using a lot more energy than he is right now. So, yeah. Okay. Another shot without any setup. And now it's just sort of like push, push, push. And I th see how he's just sort of after him. Oh, that was kind of cool. All right. Let's watch that again. Cause I saw something that I want to show you. So now he takes an outside single shot, which is probably pretty smart because he's getting stuffed. And now look at how much, Watch after he he takes that shot, right, and he walks back to the center, how he's still in a good stance, like he's still in a very athletic stance. So he just came off his knees, okay, and watch the amount of body movement that they're doing relative to each other. Nikki's all over the place, and this uses an enormous amount of energy, okay, and this is why he's getting tired when people say like, oh, ADCC, he's out of shape. Kid's not out of shape. What he's doing is he's not efficient. He's very inefficient, uh, with his movement. So let's just see if we can play this here slow. So watch. So look, see how all those arms going back and forth and all that kind of stuff, just fl kind of flailing around. Watch him. Stays in his stance. Look, creeps forward, staying in his stance. Now he's all up and out of it. He has to turn around. His arms are all over the place. He has to stop himself. And then his arms are behind him. So he has to, you know, do this. And then it's like up and back and forth. And watch, he just stays on his knees and Nikki walks right into it. Right. And so this is just kind of like lack of classic training and having to fight for your spot every week, like in a wrestle off, which happens. You know, J-Rod's obviously been a lot through that if he was varsity, but a lot of body movement from Nikki, just so much 
so much up and down and all around and arms are all over the place and all this and Nick in uh, J-Rod's not moving very much, right? Now, this was kind of interesting because I don't know what happened here. Like, did Because it didn't look like he actually got the snap. It looks like he was actually, I think he might have sprawled because he thought, because he's behind him. Remember when I talked about reaction time, right? You're always behind the guy. I think that's what happened because he started approaching him, right? He's walking forward. And I think he thinks, uh-oh, he's going to shoot into me. So he puts his hands out. Yeah, that's right. And, he's, and he sprawls because he expected him to get down. Okay, because there's no real snap there because he hasn't really touched him. Okay. But Nikki left his leg way out there. See when he snapped how his leg was way out there? That could have been bad. So they go here, right? And then watch. Instead of Nikki establishing the front headlock, see how much movement he had to do? There's a forward, backwards, forward, backwards, up, down, side to side. Arms are all over the place. And then so um, walks right into it. J-Rod never moved and let him come right up into this deep freaking double. But Nikki's got crazy powerful hips. Crazy powerful lips. And you see how he's he's definitely done a great job learning better defense with this. This is going to help him a lot. Okay. It, what'll help him more in the future is just him having a better stance and keeping it. Um, but for now, I mean, this has helped him. This is actually what's prevented him all day, all match long from getting taken down is this one wrist shiver right here, up and in into this underhook. But this body. Back, lower back and hips having to thrust in and everything is a huge amount of energy expenditure. Huge amount of energy expenditure. Okay, let's watch this sequence one more time here in fast motion. A lot of energy expenditure here. Here we go. Outside single moves a lot. Just, yeah. Right, and then J-Rod's just not moving that much. Even here, staying crouched low, and then that that's a that's a message. He's sending a message because he's up three to three to two, or is it three to one? No, it's only three to one. It could be three to two though with the locking hands. Let's call it that. <laughs> and then Nikki's just desperate, so he has to shoot. Which you know, honestly, I think that if he had shot more in the match, I, I think he would have done uh, better because. Um, you know, if, if both of them need to learn or work on posting, right? Now, I guarantee you that because J Rod's just been out for a while of wrestling, um, he's not practicing the posting and all the setups and stuff like that. And then, you know, he wrestles with or uh, rolls with Ryan all the time. So maybe he just wanted to push the offense. And that's not a bad thing to do because. If you watch Austin DeSanto, I mean, that guy pushes the offense. And if you're constantly on the defense, you're there's not a whole lot you can do. And he got him out of position a lot. And Nikki gets himself out of position a lot. But, you know, by and large, I mean, this looks like a high school wrestle off to me. And so uh, wh whoever wins the wrestle off is, is varsity, at least for that day. And the other guy's on JV or he has to cut a weight class or he has to go up a weight class. And that's the name of wrestling. <laughs> and so uh, but, you know, they're coming along. I mean, um, I think he's going to learn a lot from J-Rod, to be honest with you. I think if he continues to wrestle with J-Rod and he wrestles with Nikki Rod, then I think uh, Nikki will get a lot better. I'm still worried about his knees, though, man. I mean, believe it or not, I like the kid, right? Like, I, like I don't, I don't want, I want to see him succeed because I know he's been after this and he's a great kid. He seems like a lot of fun. Seems like a great place for them to train. They have a lot of fun, these guys. And um, I know that J Rod's actually hurt really bad right now. He broke his collarbone, but I'm hoping that. Um, God, that's really bad. I mean, I broke my collarbone, but it was nothing like that. And you know, he had to get the screws and everything. But he's young, so he'll heal. Um, but I want to see them working. I want to see everybody in jujitsu working more on wrestling fundamentals because as, as good as J Rod's shots were and the shot mechanics were good, the getting the arms out of the way was his biggest problem and shooting straight on, you know, like, um, if it ain't working, you know, you're going to have to start taking some angles and the, the, the higher the level, the more you need to take those angles. And if Nikki's Nikki's got really good square hips, you know, when you shoot into those hips, you're running into a wall. And so that's something he's got going for him, but he'll spend a lot less energy when he learns how to keep a good stance, keep his arms out in front of him because that underhook is working for him. Um, but learn how to keep people at a little bit more of a distance, do a reshot, or if he does get that underhook, get his head on the right side of it so that he can um, have better control, right? Because that, that takedown that he did going out of bounds was his best shot, but he should have circled it to the inside so that he had all the mat 
right? The back to the, uh, we would put J-Rod's mat to the back to the mat. And in other words, to the center of the mat and had all that room to work, right? Because it doesn't do you any good to, to show somebody your best move going out of bounds. All it does is show them your hand and the higher the level, the more that becomes an issue. And so um, I think it'll help him though. Cause you know, even in ADCC, you don't want to start trying to take people down on the concrete. Like why do that? Circle it back in bounds, keep it in bounds, keep the clock going and, you know, score that way. So there's a lot to it. And you could tell that J-Rod has wrestled because I saw him post his feet lift. And that's the only takedown that was scored in that match was done with wrestling uh knowledge right of of the of the of the out of bounds that was a that was a um thing that he's learned from the time that he's been in in an experienced situation so anyway if you like this let me know uh comment below like and subscribe share the content if you like it until next time thanks for watching